Hello everybody, I'm Gerald Reddick, your favorite thousandaire because I'm not a millionaire yet. And I have this one question we need to talk about. Are your affairs in order? Hello everybody and welcome back to Your Favorite Thousandaire. I'm Gerald, your host, excited to share with you once again. Now we are gonna talk about a topic that is kind of deep because it's a tough question. Are your affairs in order? And what I'm gonna do is give you 10 things you can do to make sure that your loved ones are squared away in the event of your death. So let's get right into it. But first, make sure you smash that like button subscribe to the channel and don't forget to turn on the notifications so that you guys don't miss any amazing content we put out about pro business or financial improvement let's get into the content so the first thing i would like to talk to you guys about is your banking now i know a lot of people kind of overlook this um, I started my bank a long time ago, especially before I got married. I have to think about, wait a minute, is my beneficiary information up to date? Or what if it's reversed? What if you get divorced and you still have an ex-spouse on the uh, banking information uh, as a beneficiary? So you might wanna think of that. Just go into your financial institution, get all that stuff up to date. It's really simple. You could probably do it with a phone call. And if not, just go into the bank and make sure that is squared away. Number two, which is investment accounts. Now, when it comes to things like Roth IRAs or any kind of investment accounts, um, there are certain state laws that may apply, like uh, your spouse may get that automatically, but to not leave anything to chance, just simply go in, have a sit down and update it legally on paper that, hey, this is my new beneficiary in the event something happens to me. Number three, we're gonna talk about estates. Now, this is kind of a big one because it involves your home, land, or even business. Now that could be a little tricky, especially with business, because what if uh, the person that passes away had like a business partner? So you have to have all your estates protected as well. So make sure that you be thinking about that, like who's the beneficiary, especially if you are still paying, for example, a mortgage, you need to contact the proper authorities for that your county and say, hey, you know, this is the person I'm married to now, so if something happens to me, they get the house, et cetera. Just leave all that stuff in writing and square it away. Number four, we are going to discuss personal property. Now that's different from estates because Again, with estates, you know, there's a lot of legal things that states can get involved in. And But if it's, say, your favorite baseball cap or a family heirloom or something like that, you want to go to a specific individual, then you need to, one, tell that individual, hey, if something happens to me, you get this. And also tell the person that would manage your affairs after you are passed away to give that heirloom or that item to that individual, okay? And a way you can also help protect that legally is simply by having a will. Now wills are legal documents, so you may have to get a, a notary to do that or go and see an attorney or some kind of legal entity to make that happen. And once you do that, make sure that the personnel behind have access to that because you don't want them having to look for it all over the place. Maybe post it to public record, a safety deposit box, a copy with your attorney, with another family member. Check the laws of your state to see what applies, but regardless of all of that, make sure the things you want, your last wishes are written in the will. It's all signed, legally documented, and also the personnel left behind have access to it. Number six, life insurance. If you have life insurance, make sure that the beneficiaries are up to date and also make sure that you read the insurance policies. And especially now we're in the midst of a pandemic. When 9-11 happened, insurance companies start putting a terrorism clause in it. Meaning if you get killed by a terrorist, attack or something like that, you may not be covered. Don't be surprised that now that we're in a pandemic that policies start to change, right? Like a pandemic clause or something like that. So if you are due to renew or update or something like that, you may wanna consult with an attorney or somebody who's a paralegal to help you understand those clauses to make sure you're covered. It's all fun and game when insurance companies get out money until they have to pay out all these death benefits, right? Especially uh, during these times right now. So the next thing I would like to talk to you about here, number seven, is emergency funds. Now I'm gonna do a video just for that topic later on, but emergency funds are important because in the event of a death, uh, money is not paid out right away. There is a process to it. Uh, death has to be verified. 
uh, some insurance companies may even want to investigate. So until the benefits are paid out to your loved ones, make sure that they have some emergency cash to get them through the tough times until the benefits kick in and everything like that. Number eight, make an emergency contact list. Now, even in married couples, they don't always know each other's like favorite cousin's number and stuff like that. We're just married and you may at best know the parents or the siblings. And that's if you even have all of their contact information. With social media, I'm pretty sure you can reach out and contact somebody and stuff like that. But I think it would be much easier to just make a contact list with emails and phone numbers to say, hey, if something happens to me, contact this person, this person, this person, and then they will spread the word from there, et cetera, et cetera. The passcodes, the pin codes, the passwords, whatever you want to call it. Make sure that your loved ones have access to those because you may be paying bills online, you may have bank accounts, all kind of accounts online that uh, they may have access to or need to close because you don't want that stuff just out there. Make sure they have access to that, right? Business management. Now, in some cases, you have a family owned business where you know, if one or the other uh, spouse die, for example, then the business can't continue because you're running it together and you both, for the most part, know the nooks and crannies of how the business run. You probably are aware of all the customers and stuff like that. You still have to adjust to serve or continue to serve. All right. But if that is not the case, like the wife has this business over here and the husband has this business over here and they have no clue of each other's business, then what you have to do is say, hey, listen, honey, if something happens to me, contact this person. They'll know how to shuffle around what, I, what they need to shuffle around to keep the business going. Because what you don't want to do is uh, leave your loved ones not only having to grieve, but wind up later in a lawsuit because uh, somebody didn't get served or a contract wasn't legally uh, committed to. So again, you want to put these things in place to make sure that your family is squared away. And that was it. Congratulations, everybody. You made it to the end of the video. We talked about 10 things, and that is banking, investments, personal property, estates, your will, life insurance. We talked about emergency funds, contact lists, passcodes, and business management. But I'm curious. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. If you have questions, leave them there also. Before I get out of here, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notifications so that you're in the know when we put out new videos. I'm Gerald Reddick, your favorite thousandaire because I'm not a millionaire yet. Let's go on a journey. Let's get rich together.